Housing Development and Management is a department at Lund University within the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, we do research and education uh, on housing and urban development. The historical city of Lund and Lund University offers an international academic environment. During the last 30 years I have met families all over the world who have been able to raise their overall standard of life when given a chance to improve their homes at their conditions. Unfortunately, I have also seen many failures of housing programs and policies. Housing policies and programs have oversimplified the housing issues by focusing only at one aspect at a time, such as distributing legal titles, housing finance, uh, or producing a large number of units. Our goal is to increase knowledge about how to conduct and improve participatory processes leading to good housing and sustainable development, especially for the poor in developing countries. My name is Louise Arell and the project I worked with is uh, Hura Housing, a self-help housing project for governmental employees in Manila, Philippines. I learned a lot about planning for the people and to this specific target group. What I also learned that is not specific towards the architecture focus point is also about how the uh, whole world kind of works with the Western world in addition to the urbanization and the developing world and a lot about the economics and politics behind the different decision making and so on. So that was good for me too. Having uh taken a number of interviews uh, and a number of site visits we could really see how Filipino people uh, work in their day-to-day -day life, um, live their life, uh, have their livelihood which I don't think you can get from just having lectures I think you actually really need to be there to see how this happens in reality um, which was fully achieved on, on the field trip. Having taken this course obviously it's about uh, housing in developing countries, this is something that I specifically am more keen on developing in my career as opposed to doing a, a fancy one-off building somewhere. I would rather be connected to the people and to how they actually live their lives and uh, having done this course I've really experienced how that can be possible. In my research I did studies on the urban microclimate and the cities of Fez in Morocco and Colombo in Sri Lanka and I found that the urban form that the height of buildings, the width and distance between buildings and urban objects such as trees has a big impact on the urban microclimate. I also found that urban microclimate is hardly ever considered in urban planning and design processes. A poor urban design will lead to problems with microclimate and outdoor thermal comfort. A climate conscious urban design on the other hand will lead to a good outdoor thermal comfort. By considering microclimate in urban planning and in urban design, the problems with urban warming can be mitigated and housing areas can become more comfortable and the problems with heat stress will be less. And in that way, this, this will improve the uh, well-being and health of urban dwellers. One of the most important activities are the international training programs that are sponsored by the Swedish government through CETA the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. I think the most important aim of these courses is to help participants expand their own ideas of what they can do themselves to improve housing and to promote sustainable development. Many of them work fairly narrowly within their profession or their organization 
And when they come to Lund, we try to teach them an integrated approach to development. And often they change their attitudes. Instead of seeing housing as a commodity or a product, they see it as a tool for development. Many people, when they come here, have never thought of poor people as important actors in improving their own housing. And perhaps even fewer have thought that men and women might have quite different needs in their housing and neighborhood planning. Well, PROMESA is a, uh, is a regional capacity building program with 10, 10 partners in seven different focus countries in South and Central America. The um, courses with widest impact, I would say, have been uh, the international course on organized self-help housing and the regional courses on disaster risk management and on technical assistance for housing improvement. These courses are all based on successful local experiences that have been developed into a course. And um, the typical participants on these courses come from local government level organizations or uh, non-governmental organizations. They take part in the course, learn from the experience, and then go home and apply their knowledge to their context. I attended the Organized Health Housing course in 2003, 2004 in Costa Rica. And during the course, I uh, worked on preparing a manual for organized self-help housing. I learned how to give assistance, technical assistance to the poor families who are trying to build their own houses, sometimes without government assistance. So I learned how to prepare a manual to help teach my students in the university so that they could go out in the field and try and help these families. Now it so happened that uh, after my course, the tsunami of Southeast Asia also occurred. And because the UN had seen uh, this manual which I prepared on the internet, because HDM of Lund put it on the internet, the UN had seen it, so they wrote to me and invited me, okay, asking me if I could help them in Indonesia. It was basically like I was revising what we had been learning in, in the course. Mm -hmm.